Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Hello, everybody. I'm Gloria Copeland. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim's back with us today, and she's got some more good things to share with us, so you don't want to miss any of the broadcast. Welcome, Billy. Thank we're you glad very you're much, here. Gloria. And I, I do trust that they'll get last week because we're all, this all goes together, and it readily began for me of what we're going to talk about today and studying it in 1980. And 1980, which is quite a few years ago now, 35 years or so ago, uh, I had just quit working for Kenneth E. Hagan uh, as the editor of publications, and I'm at home in my kitchen, and uh, the telephone rings, and this loud voice says, can you do a book in a week? And this is Lester Sumrall. And I <laughs> said, like Lester. Yeah, exactly, if you knew him. <laughs> I said, Brother Sumrall, nobody could do a book in a week. He said, you can if you work night and day. And he said, he said, he um, said, Nelson wants to take several months to do this, and he said, we're in the middle of a crisis right now, and nobody knows that this is jihad. Did you know in 1980, nobody even heard the word jihad? They didn't even know what that was. No. And he said, they don't know what it is, and we've got to get the book out. So I went up there to, um, to South Bend, Indiana, and we worked. It took us three weeks, but um, we worked, basically. I slept four hours a night, and we got the book out, <laughs> and uh, 1980... I'm going to tell you a little secret here. Don't tell anybody. We won't. We won't tell. 1980, there was a crisis going on. In 1979, uh, some radical students in Iran had captured our U.S. Embassy, taken yes. the U.S. Embassy, and they had captured uh, 60 diplomats and employees of the embassy, and they were still holding him with them when Lester called me. They held them 444 days. They let some away, and, but they ended up holding 52 for the entire time. And we and, just let them do it, huh? Oh, it was, it was a crisis time. And, and Lester said, people don't have understanding. They don't know what this is. And so uh, I came and did the book for Lester. We did it. And the name of the book is Jihad, The Holy War. And then it has a subtitle, The Destiny of Iran and the Muslim World. And this is when I found out about those things, doing that book for Lester. Uh, I wouldn't have known about it either. We got the book done. It's an amazing book, and it, it did tell. Uh, and it's right up to date. I got them to bring this book back because it's right up to date with what's happening today in Iran and in the Muslim world. But with this book, um, I was in Washington, D.C. for a meeting, and I met someone whose husband was really involved in the campaign for Reagan, Reagan's 1980 campaign. And so uh, we ask uh, this woman, uh, well, how is he prepared for the debates? They're going to have the debates. And she said, well, he's sure of everything except the one subject of the hostages in Iran. He doesn't really, he's not really up on that. And I said, oh, I've got a book. And I gave him this book. It had just come hot off the press. And uh, so my husband and I are sitting back at home in Collinsville, Oklahoma, in our little house where we raised, big house, old house, where we raised our children. And we're watching the debates. And they come to the question on the debates about the hostage situation. Ronald Reagan, I heard him quote verbatim out of this book. Is that he didn't say he was quoting verbatim out of this book. But mm. it had to do with his being knowledgeable of what to do in that situation. Now, Jerry Savelle told me, because people at the time, they didn't, you know, they didn't really understand anything. And so he picked up this book and he started reading it, Jihad, the Holy War, the Destiny of Iran and the Muslim World. And he said, I read a couple of chapters and I thought, Lester, what are you into now? And threw the book aside. Jerry told me that. But that was the attitude of a lot of people. If they had known what Lester Sumrall knew, Lester Sumrall even knew the park we're going to see before the week's over. He even knew the park in London wow. that later Osama bin Laden used to, uh, to, to uh, recruit people for jihad. So, Isn't that something? where we are right now, and you really need to get last week's, and there's lots of places you, could, you can get that, and, and you can find out through this uh, Kenneth Copeland Ministries how that you can watch that, what already has gone before. Uh, we started out with Iran. Um, we, we're, we, Jesus told us to watch the nations. Iran is the one with the longest Bible history. Elam was the grandson of Noah. 
So it starts there. And we're going to trace them all through the Bible. And then we're going to trace them into their prophetic future. So um, interesting. Yes. And so today we're on uh, uh, a, a section that uh, he calls, Brother Samuel calls, Iran and Empire. And uh, I want to read you his, just his uh, opening paragraph before we begin here. He says, permit me to grasp your spirit so that we can walk together in the prophetical truth, which will bring you an understanding of the times. It is only through the Bible that anyone can understand them. Isn't that the truth, Gloria? Yep. I mean, uh, this book was written in 1980. It's just the same at today. These truths are just the same. But the today. times that we live in have increased. Iran has increased. It's come on into its Bible prophetic place. Yes, right. And um, there's only one way you can understand it. You can understand it just by watching the, the nightly news or, or your uh, Internet news. You, you have to have the Bible in hand to know what's going That's on gonna now. That's going to be really and interesting. And having the Bible in hand keeps you from being depressed. If I didn't or know stupid. the Word of God. Or stupid, right. <laughs> if I didn't know the Word of God, Gloria. Oh, my. We've talked about we this a lot. We don't want to think about it. We don't want to think about it. <laughs> if, if, if you had to watch Fox News, let's say, and you didn't have any knowledge of the Bible, you'd, you'd want to say, stop the planet and let me off, you know? <laughs> Oh, thank you, well, Jesus. Well, where can I go somewhere to a, to a wilderness spot? I'm happy to be a word people. Yeah, me too. And this is all word. This is word just as much as Mark 11, 23 is word. These things. So then he writes in here, more than 2,500 years ago, God spoke to a man named Daniel in visions and dreams and showed him empires unborn. So that's what, what we're going to look at today. To yes, we're going to look at the empires not yet then born. Now, God wants you to understand the times. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, there is um, an outline there of the army that came to make David king over Israel. He was actually running from Saul. And 1 Chronicles 12 gives you God's view of this army and their attributes. And they come from all of the 12 tribes of Israel. And uh, it's interesting to see. They could stand and, you know, and uh, this is from 1 Chronicles 12, 1 and 2. Now, these are they that came to David to Ziklag while he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. Now, getting mm -hmm. ready to make David king. We're getting ready for Jesus to come and be king, the Messiah, the King Messiah to come. And so they were mighty men, helpers of the war. They were armed with bows and they could use both the right hand and the left and hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow. Even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin, they came. So these were men from each tribe who came to make David king and their attributes are pointed out. Now let's get down to the tribe of Issachar. That's in verse 32 here. And of the children of Issachar, they were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Mm. So that is something that's pointed out by God that was needed in this army of the Lord and it's needed yeah, today. That's exactly right. We need understandings of the times and we need to know what America ought to do, what Israel ought to that's do, right. what wherever you are watching this from, what your nation ought to do or what you, you in ought that to nation. Do. What, what let's get it down to, do. to you. Yeah, yeah, what you ought to do. Um, how marvelous it would be if we had heads of state, President of the United States, getting ready for an election, or advisors to heads of states who had understanding of the times and knew what nations ought to do. Now, mm -hmm. there's another scripture in Isaiah 33, 6, and that is a chapter about, um, it's about judgments. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. If you want to be not falling off your chair yeah. or, 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 or going into deep depression when you watch the news, then what keeps you from it is wisdom and knowledge That's a shall great be the stability of your times. And you're going to get that in wisdom and knowledge in one place, and that is the Word of God. That's right. It's only through an understanding of the Bible uh, and the prophets. You should uh, be able to watch the news and not be moved. Yes, absolutely. Believe God, pray if it's the situation, but don't, be fear, don't let fear in. No. We don't have fear. We have no place We're for faith, fear. People. Opposite from faith. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what does faith come from? The Word. 
The Word of God. Knowing. Knowing. It comes from knowing, It comes really. from knowing. I like that. Yeah, knowing. Yeah. Yes, 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 Glory. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we use faith for our health. We use yeah. faith for our finances. But you have to use faith for these days. You do. That's right. And that's going to come. That's what we're going to talk about because this week. Because faith brings God on the scene. Mm -hmm. Fear opens the door to the devil. Absolutely. So you can't afford not to have faith. No. You've got to have faith. You don't want to have, uh, you know, fear and, and Satan start uh, working with your mind. Oh, you're panicky, you know. If because. you can't watch the news without getting in fear, don't watch the yeah, news. Yeah, just turn it off. If something big happens, somebody but you know what? You. Some people say to me, well, I, I can't watch the news anymore. Gloria, I've got this right here. You talk back to the news. You can talk back to it, but you can know, hey, here's another sign coming to place. Right. Or you can pray, take your authority sit up there and rule over the, the demonic powers. Right. So wisdom and Thank knowledge. Thank God that we know about faith. Yeah. Oh. Wisdom and knowledge is the stability of your times. That's right. That's a good scripture. Uh, so in Jesus, when he was in, um, um, we're going on to page two now, Gloria. I can't get off of Isaiah 33. He can't get off. She, she likes that scripture. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability, stability. of thy time. You're not a nervous Whenever wreck. Whenever thy time is. You're going to need wisdom and knowledge. <laughs> and you're not going to be a nervous wreck. No. You're going to be peaceful and calm. You're going to talk back to the news and tell it this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. We yeah. might post this up near our TVs. That's someplace. a good idea. <laughs> That's a good idea. But going on uh, here in, in page two on your notes there, Jesus said that to know when he's coming to set up his earthly kingdom, and he's going to do that, that there are two groups of people we need to watch for signs of his coming. And one is Israel. He calls them the fig tree. And the other is the nations of prophecy. He calls them all the other trees. You'll read this passage in uh, 21st chapter of Luke. So uh, to do that, we're going to review just a little bit here. Uh, the nations as nations came forth from the three sons of Noah. And after the flood, they built the Tower of Babel. They rebelled. And then God brought forth on the scene a separated nation, Israel, through the man, Abraham. And then Israel is to uh, reveal God to the nations. He had a plan A that they would live in this land that was a, a, a actually, it was a, a passageway between three great continents. They can show you that uh, old ancient map. And you can see there the top leaf here is to the left is Europe and then Asia. Then you see the little passageway that is uh, Israel. There are land passageway, easy way to go, the way of the sea it's called, and then down into Africa. So he put them there. He blessed them. He spoke all the blessings of uh, Deuteronomy 28. He said, you live in that land. I'll bless you. Yes. And then all the nations will know it, that you've got one God and you're blessed. Now, if you don't obey me, then we're going to go to plan B. And plan B is going to be uh, Deuteronomy 28, 64, I think. I'm going to scatter you all around the world. And then in Deuteronomy 30, he says, but the end of latter days, I'm going to bring you back home. So we, we def they would definitely went to plan B. Uh, they disobeyed God. They went all throughout the world. And now then God is bringing them home. And we're seeing that God's word is true because he's bringing the Jews home. Now, they did disobey God. And uh, so their temple was uh, destroyed and, and someone came in and, and helped the scattering. What caused them to be scattering was uh, Nebuchadnezzar and Iraq. Uh, and so some years before Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon, Babylon at that time, came to burn the temple, they carried off some of the young people of Israel, the brightest and youngest. Uh, so uh, the brightest and greatest. So uh, from Daniel 1 and verse 3, then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, this is King Nebuchadnezzar, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and competent to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. Uh, the Jews then, as well as now, had a reputation for being very, very bright. And uh, so in capturing the intelligentsia of this young, of the royal family of Judea, uh, Nebuchadnezzar hoped to put to, it to use in his kingdom and to rob Judea of these young men with all these bright talents. So um, Dr. Sumrall wrote in his book, Daniel, a young prince of Judah, was carried off into captivity with other children of Israel. 
There he was chosen with other outstanding young captives to be trained in the king's college for three years. Mm. When offered food and drink from the king's table, uh, Daniel purposed in his heart to obey the living God. He would not be defiled with the king's meat or wine. Praise he actually God. had to, uh, he didn't want to eat non-kosher and he didn't want to eat food offered to idols. So Daniel 1, 17, as for these four youths, Daniel, and then we call them the three Hebrew children, God gave, they went to the king's college. It's a three-year college. God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. This is Daniel uh, chapter 1, verse 18 now. At the end of the time, when the king had commanded that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king spoke with them, and among all of them, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king. Mm. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all his kingdom uh, three years. So Praise he, God. so he, he, God blessed them and they became so bright and God promoted them. And uh, then uh, there's, there's started to become uh, revealed to Daniel and to us in the book of Daniel and to Nebuchadnezzar the king, the future. So there's a, the first prophetic picture of Iran is of silver. In three revelations, Daniel, through supernatural power, saw the entire scope of world empires in the prophetic world of the Bible. Now, later on, we're going to define what is the prophetic world. I remember I used to hear Brother Hagin say, well, now you know the Antichrist is not going to reign supreme over in this part of the world. And I thought, well, how could that be? Because everything affects everything. But then I discovered that there is a prophetic world in the Bible. We'll talk about it. It was oh, the prophetic good, world, that, and it was the world that surrounded the great sea, the Mediterranean Sea. So we're going to see how that prophecy goes and how we watch those nations from the prophetic world. So the first revelation that came to Daniel uh, came as a dream to the worldly king Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, the interpretation of the dream was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream, and it so troubled him that he was threatening to put all of the wise men to death if they didn't tell him the dream and they didn't tell him its meaning. So God revealed it to Daniel. Daniel and the three Hebrew children sought God, and God gave them the interpretation. So in Daniel 2.31, it says, and this is Daniel talking to the king, telling him his dream and what it meant. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. We're putting this up on screen for you to see. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest until a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, of iron and clay and broke them to pieces. Um, what do you think that? So what we're it said a stone that was not cut without hands and all right. Do you are, think it's supernaturally? Well, what uh, it means was, is this. Now you see the uh, you see the the image there on the screen. So the head, Gloria, I'm going to show you the image here uh, since we can't see it. Uh, I think Brother Sumrall has got a picture of it in here somewhere. But the head, he saw like a great metal colossus, a great figure. And the head was of gold. And then uh, down uh, from that head of gold was coming two arms of silver and then copper and then legs of iron and brass, I mean, iron and then toes of, of brass. This is a metallic image and it's going to show all the um, kingdoms, all the empires that are going to come in the prophetic world. And these empires mm -hmm. are in that world that affects Israel and affects the coming forth of the Messiah. So he said to the king, you're the head of gold. Babylon was the head of gold, a very precious metal. But you're not going to last forever. There's going to come a kingdom after you of silver, two arms, and this is the Medo-Persian Empire. So this is the one Iran's a part of. We're looking particularly at yeah, Iran, yeah. Medo-Persian Empire. But you're going to be overthrown by the Grecian Empire, which is copper, Alexander the Great. Then after that's coming this terrible Roman Empire, two legs of iron. Uh, and then a revival of the old Roman Empire in the ten toes that are part iron and part clay. Now the stone, these are all the empires. These are the Gentile ruling in that part of the world. 
But the stone cut out of a mountain without hands, Gloria, man doesn't have anything to do with. Hmm. God does. And that stone is going to come. It's going to be a kingdom. And it's going to hit that big colossus right in the toes, in the time of the toes, when the old Roman Empire is revived. And it's going to break into pieces, all those empires and all that's left of them. Uh, We still are affected by Babylon, for instance, had a lot of occult things. And um, the... uh, the, the Persian Empire had a lot of uh, wealth and, and lustful things. The Grecian Empire was intellectual. Roman Empire had a lot to do with governments and things, but they were man-made, most of them. So this stone cut out without hands, it's going to hit that thing at the time of the toes, Old Roman Empire revived. All of that is going to go down, all man's attempts at empires mm. is going to go down, be like the dust, be like the, the thrashing floor, at chaff. And it's going to blow away, and then there's going to be a kingdom that fills the whole earth. Mm. And that is the kingdom of the Messiah, the kingdom Praise of Christ, God. the kingdom of God. That's the so good news. So that's the good news. Yeah. Yeah. The stone at the bottom. But here, they're seeing it before it happens. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? It is awesome. How much of it will we see, do you think? Gloria, the, of course, the Babylonian... I know this is a loaded yeah. question. <laughs> the Babylonian <laughs> Empire's already passed, thank God, way long ago. Medo-Persian Empire long ago. Alexander the Great, long ago, the Roman Empire, long ago, but it revives. We're seeing that right now. Okay. We are seeing the uh, European Union on the western leg, and then we're seeing things happen in uh, even the uh, uh, Muslim world on the eastern leg. And we're down there. We're down oh, there to that part. These are Bible days. These are Bible days, and thank God we're almost to the time of the stone cut out without hands, wow. which will be the visible Look kingdom. Up. Look redemption up, your redemption draws, draws nigh. nigh. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Be sure to get the notes at kcm.org notes. And remember, Jesus is Lord.